This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and on this channel, we build speakers of all types. Car, home, it doesn't matter. I love building speakers, and I love sharing it with you with the hopes that you'll give it a try, too. If you're completely new to building speakers, you've never done it before, you might want to start with a kit like this. This is the MK Boom Kit from Parts Express, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it. And the adventure starts right now. This kit comes with everything you need to make a portable Bluetooth speaker. Batteries, an amplifier, crossovers, drivers, and all the connections that you're going to need. Well, almost all the connections you need. I'll tell you what I mean here in a minute. Parts Express has a ton of kits like this, and they're great if you want to tackle a DIY project without a bunch of tools. You don't need a saw or a router or any loud tool with a bunch of sharp blades. That's because this kit comes with a knockdown or a flat pack enclosure. All you have to do is put the enclosure together. Let's look at that right now. Inside this long skinny box, you'll find the crossovers, the port tubes, and some stick on rubber feet. That's important. Set that aside. Don't lose it. Next, you'll find the side pieces and the center dividers. The center dividers are thinner and they've got a hole in them. Keep watching and you'll see what the holes are for. Then we have the back. It has some cutouts as well. We're going to talk about those cutouts a little bit later in the video. This piece is the baffle. It has two dados on the inside for the center dividers and a rabbit on all four of the outside edges. On the front of the baffle, we see the sides have a small round over and the speaker holes are pre-cut, including recesses for flush mounting. The next two pieces are the top and the bottom. These are identical. They have a pair of dados for the center dividers and there are rabbits on three of the four sides. That's gonna be important later when we start putting everything together. The rest of the kit is going to be shipped in separate boxes. It's going to have the speakers, the amplifier parts, and all the odds and ends that you need to put this together. It even comes with the screws. Let's talk about this piece right here. Remember the big hole on the back piece? The amp and the batteries will mount to this metal plate. I'm going to come back to that metal plate later. For now, I want to just focus on the enclosure. Before you start slathering on glue, it's a good idea to mock everything up. This will give you a chance to visualize what's going on before final assembly. Here we see the beauty of these pre-cut pieces. The dados and the rabbits line up perfectly and everything fits together nice and tight. There are four rabbits on the inside of the baffle. These are going to be used to line up the top, the bottom, and the sides. Now let's get messy and start slathering on some glue. Start by putting glue on all of the dados and on the bottom rabbit of the baffle. I like to use this silicone glue brush to spread the glue around. I'll give you a link to this and everything else I use down in the video description. Now I'm assembling this on a brutal hot day. I could probably have gotten away without clamping as the glue is going to set up very fast when it's 90 degrees out in the garage but I followed the instructions on the glue bottle and I gently clamped everything, gently clamp everything. Those quarter inch center dividers are a little bit flimsy. If you crank down on them with your clamp, you're gonna break them. Then I gave the glue 30 minutes to dry. I used those 30 minutes as an opportunity to go inside and lay down under the air conditioning vent. <laughs> it was a hot day. <laughs> now the next step is very important. So pay close attention to this part. Off camera, I glued up the sides in the back. Remember earlier in the video when I talked about the back piece? This is important. There is no dado on the back piece for the center dividers. But there are rabbited recesses for the control panel and the ports. Make sure that these recesses are on the outside of the enclosure. The top and bottom pieces have three rabbited edges and these are used to line them up to the sides and the back of the box. Here's a tip for you. If I were going to do this again, especially on a hot day where the glue sets really fast, I would have just put it all together at once, everything except for the top. You can get away with doing it that way because of all the rabbits and dados. These grooves just line everything up perfectly. In fact, a good idea would be to get one of those ratchet strap clamps that have the four corner pieces so you could just ratchet strap this thing all together at once. I've got one. I'm not sure why I didn't dig it out and use it. Now here's the important part. 
you may be tempted to put the top on now. Don't do it. You need to install the crossovers before you put the top on. The crossovers are really nice. If you've ever assembled a crossover, you know that the first time you put together your own passive crossover network, it's really intimidating. Parts Express really went above and beyond on this crossover layout. The crossovers have four little feet, one in each corner. Just dab a little hot glue on them and stick those things inside the enclosure. You might be tempted to put the crossovers in the center, but the amplifier is going to go there and there's not enough room in the center space for the crossovers and the amplifier. Even though I really like the crossovers, the crossover connector is the weakest part of this kit. You're instructed to cut the connector off of the crossover, strip those wires back, and then solder and shrink wrap to the speaker wires. You could also crimp on some connectors. That'll work just fine. But you can't do any of that without more tools. Everything else for this kit you could do with basic tools that most people just have laying around. You don't really even need clamps with this kit. You could just put some heavy books on it or some weights to hold things together while the glue sets up and dries. I really wish Parts Express would have included some kind of plug or terminal with this part of the kit. It's really the only weakness in the kit. Hang on a second before you start soldering those wires together. There's something you've got to know before you go on with this project. The speaker wires connect to the board right here and the connector that comes with the kit uses four unlabeled black wires. The good news, they include this information in a schematic that's included with the amp. Here's what you need to do. Grab some shrink wrap, grab some tape, grab something you can use to mark these wires. Dig the instructions out, mark the positive and negative for the right, mark the positive and negative for the left. That way you don't have to keep going back to the instructions to figure out which wire is which. Go ahead and color code those wires. Oh, and Parts Express, if you're listening, help us out here. How hard is it to have four different colored wires on the speaker connector? Before you make the connection, pass the speaker wire pairs through the center holes in the center dividers. After you make that connection, you're going to fill those holes with hot glue. Now we're ready to glue up the top. After the glue dries, you're going to want to sand it to smooth out the seams and get rid of any excess glue. Now I'm using a random orbit sander with, I think it's 120 grit sandpaper. If you don't have a random orbit sander, that's fine. You can just take some sandpaper and hold it in your hand and sand it smooth. But it's worth the money to buy an inexpensive sanding block to hold on to the sandpaper. It makes sanding go a whole lot easier and they're not very expensive. If you're going to paint the enclosure, I recommend that you go over it again with some 220 grit sandpaper. But I'm not going to paint mine. I'm going to veneer mine. I've literally had this veneer laying around for years. I need to get it out of the garage, so I'm going to veneer this project. I like to mask off the speaker recesses so I don't get adhesive on the speaker recesses. I also like to mask anything that I'm not going to actively try to stick the veneer to so I don't accidentally stick it someplace I don't want it. This adhesive I'm using can be really strong and as soon as it sticks, it sticks and it's going to be a pain to get off so you don't want to make any mistakes when you're veneering. I'm using Loctite spray adhesive for no particular reason. It's just what I picked up at the store that day. You can also use a Weldwood contact cement. There's tons of products that can be used for this. A lot of times you see people just using wood glue to veneer their projects. The instruction said to spray both surfaces, wait for it to dry, and then stick it together. Here's a tip. Lay down some wax paper and gradually remove it as you stick the veneer to the enclosure. This adhesive is going to grab immediately and if you mess it up, you're going to have a heck of a time peeling it off. So now that I have veneer on all six sides, I'm going to sand it down with some 220 grit sandpaper. You'll notice some of the edges aren't very smooth. That's because I was trying to show you that you don't need a lot of expensive tools in order to make this kit. So I didn't bust out the flush trim bit on my router. I just used a utility knife to trim the edges. Now I can fix a lot of those mistakes just by sanding those pieces down a little bit. You'd be surprised what a little sandpaper can do. I also had a little bit of a problem with the baffle. The baffle has this tiny roundover on it and the veneer that I'm using just wasn't flexible enough to bend across that roundover. 
So for that reason, I don't recommend that you veneer yours. I recommend that you paint yours. I'm going to protect the wood veneer with a clear finish. I'm using Minwax Polycrylic. This is easy to work with. You just brush it on with the grain, let it dry for two hours, and then sand it with your 220 grit sandpaper. You're going to want at least three coats. This is a great finish, especially if you like the color and the grain of your wood surface. On to the easy part, hooking up the speakers. These connections are color coded. The blue wire is the tweeter positive. It's bundled in this foam along with the tweeter negative wire. Now that foam is going to keep the wires from making a bunch of noise when they bang around inside the enclosure. If you look close at the tweeter terminals, there's a little bit of red on one of the terminals. That's the positive terminal, color coded. That's always nice. The red wire is the woofer positive. It's bundled with the black negative wire for the woofer. If you look real closely at the connections on the woofer, there's a little plus sign on the positive terminal and a little negative sign on the negative terminal. You're gonna wanna pre-drill the holes. Whenever you're working with MDF, you always pre-drill your holes or you're gonna split the MDF. For this, you're really gonna need a power drill, but you can just screw the screws in with a regular screwdriver. Speaking of screws, I like these screws. They've got a coarse thread and they're gonna stick in the MDF much better than like a sheet metal screw. And the screw itself is not fluted like a wood screw. So this kind of screw is what you wanna use for speaker projects. Next, we just take the amp assembly and squeeze it into the opening in the back and screw it down. Hang on tight and I'll show you how to put this assembly together. The ports just press fit into the holes we plug it in and now we're ready to listen. I'm gonna be playing Rebecca Pigeon's version of Spanish Harlem. I can't play it for you because of copyright restrictions, but this is a great track if you wanna test a speaker and see how good it actually sounds. The song opens up with one of those big upright bass fiddle things. And if your bass is off, if it's weak, you're not gonna be able to hear it. And if your bass is boomy, it's gonna really show and it's gonna sound terrible. Now the vocalist also hits those S and T sounds very hard. If you have any flaws in your design, those two features of this track are going to expose those flaws. So how does it sound? Well, it puts out a ton of bass, but it's the wrong kind of bass. It's too boomy. There's no low frequency growl. I kind of feel like this thing has the ports tuned just a little bit too high. But you have to be realistic. You're not going to get a lot of low end, deep bass with two four inch drivers. The highs were perfect and there's absolutely no port noise. The excursion on these drivers is impressive. It is fun to watch them move. Would I recommend this kit? If you have virtually no tools and you want to get into speaker building, this is a great kit to get started with. Now, if you want something portable, this is a fantastic option. It comes with rechargeable batteries and a charging module that mounts to the amplifier assembly. Speaking of the amplifier assembly, if you'll click this video right here, I'll show you how to put the amplifier assembly together. Or you can hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next adventure.